Hey, Jay. Okay, so I'm going to start us off today with a dad joke. Um, I'm not the master of dad jokes, but there's a account that I see sometimes that I like, and they have this one. This is dad jokes. Uh, dad says jokes on Instagram. I fell in my driveway and can't sue anyone. It was my own asphalt. <laughs> so I figured I'd, I'd pick that one as a lawyer. I thought maybe kind of touched home with me, so... So absolutely perfect. And welcome to the show, Kyle. Really great to, to talk with you today. We were talking offline or off air rather, and you mentioned that a big piece of your brand and what we're going to be talking about today is these letters that you were writing to your father. And I remember from a previous conversation when we first met, we were going over this. Can you let the Feel Good Fathers know what what is this initiative and what's this personal brand all about? Yeah. So the letters that I wrote to my father um, are the backbone of my book, Amazing Courage, Lessons from a Life of Choosing Faith Over Fear, that's going to come out in late May of 2024. And those uh, letters are, uh, there are a series of letters that I wrote to my father when he was diagnosed with esophageal cancer back in 2019. Um, I, you know, I wrote one of them each morning, um, you know, after a run and before going into the office each day. And I sent them to my father, the old fashioned way, white envelopes with postage stamps, um, from, from San Antonio to Atlanta. And I decided to turn those letters into a book, uh, because I wanted to share that same message that I was communicating to my father, um, with other people. And, and that's a message of, the ability to choose faith and to conquer fierce lies with God's truth. Um, something that's very near and dear to my heart uh, as a former atheist and someone who struggled with fear and anxiety a lot. Um, I had experienced a radical life transformation through faith and in the gospel. And I wanted to share that with my dad to encourage him in his season of, of trial and then just felt moved afterwards to turn those letters into a book and share them with more people. So that's kind of the origin of the book and what I'm here trying to do. I think it's a real testament to the relationship that he built with you. What was it like and what do you think were the main behaviors that he did as a father that maintained that relationship with you as your, um, you know, as you became more of an adult? One of the things my father always taught me uh, was that the one thing no one can take from you is your positive attitude. And mm -hmm. he wasn't a, an especially cheerful or bubbly person. So this wasn't a fanciful optimism. It, it was really more about affirming that you have control over how you respond to situations and you have the ability to overcome whatever obstacle or setback you might face. Um, and that wasn't a faith driven message necessarily. I, I really didn't know uh, growing up and in, in, until my father's cancer diagnosis, I really wasn't sure what my father's position on faith and what his faith life looked like. It, it I had a really strong relationship with my dad, but it was just, confined to these sort of comfortable topics, right? And, and faith wasn't one of them, these kind of bigger questions of life. They weren't really something we talked about. Hmm. But nevertheless, that lesson that he gave me about about controlling your own response and, um, and, and how you react in life, I found a perfect corollary in, you know, in my faith journey. And so, yeah, when he got um, sick, it, I was trying to write back to him from, from a position of faith to tie back to this message that he had always been teaching me all along. I, I really, that's, that's really great. I love that. Uh, I think a follow-up here I have is as you're beginning your new family, congratulations, uh, a couple years into it, what would you say would be the, the chief ways that you're applying these lessons? Gener generationally to your marriage and then to your, uh, your sons. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope that 
I capture some of the virtues that my my dad has had as a father, right? And and that's something that I'm I'm striving to do. My first son is almost two. Uh, my second son is coming, um, maybe at the end of this month, maybe maybe early next month. So I'm still, you know, early in the uh, in the process, right? A lot of it up to this point has been sort of the nurturing, the, the diaper changes, the, the getting food ready and, and things like that. Uh, but as my, as my older son is, um, you know, he's growing into his personality. He's, you know, he's becoming more of a little boy um, than, than an infant or a baby. I'm, I'm starting to really think a lot about, you know, the examples that, that my father set um, in terms of, you know, just that level of unconditional love and that affirmation that, you know, I, I had the ability within me to do anything that I, that I set my mind to. Um, and, and look, my, my father wasn't perfect, right? There's, there's other parts of him that, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably learning what not to do. Right. Um, and, you know, there, that, that's part of the process. And, and my dad um, could be a little demanding at, at times and and had kind of a vision for my life that sometimes was a little um, overbearing, but it, it was always mixed with a genuine belief that I was capable of greatness and a genuine love and and desire for my well being right and and so I'm kind of processing all of that and and trying to craft my approach to raising my boys and and to to give them that. Um, that shot of encouragement and love that I always got with maybe loosening the reins a little bit on, on telling them they need to be a doctor or a lawyer, right. Which it ended up working out well for me anyway, but uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm trying to map that out right now. That's awesome. Um, so you have something else we were talking about was uh, a, a big piece of this, this new initiative for you or this current initiative is overcoming this fear, anxiety. You had mentioned in that, that before, what were the things that when you were approaching fatherhood the first time around that really surprised you that you actually had some anxiety about? Well, I, I would say I had, I, I had anxiety or, or sort of a general um, worry about, kind of the overall process of, of just doing something brand new, right? I mean, you're just going to learn something completely new. Um, and, and so that was a little, that preoccupied my mind going into it, right? Of just figuring out, I'm going to do all these things I've never done before. I had never changed a diaper. You know, I, I had never, uh, you know, fed a baby maybe once or twice when I was a, when I was a kid with cousins, but it, it, and it essentially it was going to be brand new. Um, and, you know, I, I drew on my faith um, there to just, you know, tap into God's promises that, okay, you, you know, I've got everything within me that I need. God's plans for me and my family are, uh, you know, to have a bright future and not for, not for disaster and really relied on my faith, especially because we had a couple of um, moments of concern medically with our son and in that towards the end of my wife's pregnancy and after he was born and thankfully everything worked out just fine but there was a couple of tense moments and long nights of of worry there and uh definitely drew on on my faith there to get through those those times um and regarding what have i learned in the process I, one of the biggest lessons uh, from being a father of a young kid that I've learned is you have to be flexible and, and highly adaptable in real time. Because as soon as I figure, <laughs> think I have something figured out, you know, he's on to the next, right? So you, you spend a couple of weeks trying to figure out their schedule or, or what it is that keeps them calm or happy as a four month old, it, you finally get it down and then they've moved on and you're so your your knowledge is constantly obsolete you're constantly behind the learning curve and i think part of being a dad is realizing okay this situation isn't going to go exactly how i think or maybe how i plan it i really have to kind of step back figure out what's going on and adapt and and try to be a visionary of what what my kids going to need next in my mastermind we're going over the book 10x is easier than 2x 
And it, it talks a lot about what you're talking about, the going from a husband or just a man into a father and really embracing that role, that new identity is almost like a, a 10x thing. It's not something where you can just improve what you've done on or what you've done in the past in order to excel in that new role. And uh, that it, it sounds precisely what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a quantitative change of like a little bit more. I mean, I think it's a fundamental change. It, you, your life changes, right? And I know there's lots of cliches here of like, oh, I never knew I could love, you know, someone so much. And, you, you know, they're cliches for a reason, because a lot of people feel that way when it when it happens, right? Um, I mean, that's how cliches come about. Um, and they're, you know, they're, there's a certain truth to them. And one of the things that has been great about fatherhood for me is I've had to grow and, you know, and candidly, I've had to come to the realization that I have a lot of flaws, you know, and that shouldn't have been a surprise in the first place. But, you know, I have selfish thoughts about, about sometimes about wanting, um, about being frustrated that I don't have more of sort of my time or, or quiet times or, or things like that. And I'm still, you know, have this full-time career as a, as a lawyer, I'm launching, uh, my book and, and, you, you know, th talking to people like you in, in efforts related to that, I'm trying to be a good husband and you have all of this, um, competing uses of your time and energy, and then your kidneys, a ton of your attention and, and love also, and it's very rewarding, but it, you know, the process has highlighted to me, it's like, okay, I still need to grow a, a lot as a person. And I feel like that fundamental change, the 10 times change that you're talking about of when you become a father, it really challenges you to stop being complacent with maybe where, where you are as a person and, and you have to, you know, grow again, evolve again. What are the main areas where you're growing like that? What are the main areas where you were complacent that you're now growing into the next thing? I think being selfish, honestly, is, is one. And it, it's something that I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have told you before I had kids that I was, that I needed to work on being more selfless, even though, I mean, maybe intellectually, I would have like said it because, you know, as a Christian, we're, you know, we we all know that you need to be more selfless and it's, it's part of the message of the gospel. So probably intellectually, I would have said it, but I, I, I don't think I really understood what it, what it means to really pour more into someone else than yourself until we had our, our first kid. And, and, and that's been eye opening to me because more than anything, I think it drove home in a real way to me, the theoretical concept of like loving another as you love yourself. Mm. Tell me more about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let me say it this way. Um, we, when we had our, our son, it, it's like you're, you're forced into, and I'm not saying forced in a bad way, but you're forced into loving this, um, this kid as, you know, as much as you love yourself, right? I mean, they're completely dependent on you. Um, and look, of course, my wife is, is in the early phase, she's taking on more than 50% of the responsibility with the feeding and everything just by, by nature. And she's a wonderful woman and mother, but nevertheless, as the dad, right. I mean, I tried to be as a, I tried to be very, very involved. Um, and it forces you because the kid is completely dependent. And because you have this overwhelming sense of love for them, right. You, you're kind of naturally performing this selfless love for this other person. And I think I, when I saw that and I saw how I, how I felt there, it helped me realize um, how 
how much more I, I could give to loving others, right. Other than my kid, because it's like, I had experienced what I, the way I think that uh, we're supposed to love someone. And, um, once you kind of experience it and you go through that process, I think it's kind of eye opening of, you know, maybe I'm not really doing enough with the other people in my life. Oh, oh man, you keep me up there. How so? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I, again, I think it goes back to your, what motive do you have? Like with, you know, with your, with your parents or with your siblings or with your neighbor or your coworkers um, and being more intentional, um, you, you know, to them of, caring about their needs, um, and what they're, what they're going through the same way that we do with our, with our son. Right. Cause it's, it's very easy, you know, everything with your, with your kid is like, Oh, they've, are they acting a little different? Are they, are they running a fever or are they, um, is something going on at their, at their daycare? I mean, it's like just constant that, that thought mill is constantly churning. Right. Um, and, it, and I give my son so much attention on that, that I was, you know, I've come to realize is like, hey, just a little bit of that, with regard to other uh, relationships. You know, asking people how they're how they're doing, taking more of a genuine interest in their well being is um, something that I need to do. Hmm. I really love that. I think that's a, a fantastic idea, and really the culmination of this going from selfless to, or rather, selfish to to selfless. And, um, I really love this idea of, you know, treating your neighbor yourself and it's sort of this concept of this intentional relationships. And I'm really thinking about Gary Vaynerchuk years ago said, um, you know, he was like, if there are people in your life that you want to have a better relationship with the single best thing you can do is go have a relationship with them. And I think uh, I, I love this lesson for feel good fathers. Love this lesson for me. Just a reminder of, hey, um, we're all human. We can apply that same empathy that we have towards our offspring, towards our you know our wives, towards our spouses, to everybody else that we want to have that great relationship with. Um, that's fantastic. So um, I want to go back to this idea of the the response optimism idea. Um, what is like a, a, a critical moment where that's been, where you kind of woke up and said, oh yeah, my dad taught me that. And, you know, I think the lesson from my father was so kind of pervasive and, and was instilled in me in so many small ways, you know, walks off the football field after practice um, you, you know, late night talks when I had, you know, done something that was out of alignment of, of, you know, the way that our, um, the way that I was raised. Yeah, I mean, it, it was repeated to me in so many, um, individual instances and moments that I don't think there's really, a you know, like a hallmark movie scene where all of a sudden my dad like and I were in this certain spot and and he told me this wisdom he had been withholding from me you know it, it wasn't really like that I think he kind of sewed it into me all through my life um and I, I think I I understood it to a to a certain extent but I think after I left college and and law school and I was really in a you know like I said I was I was an atheist at the time. I was living with a really selfish ethic of of just trying to fulfill whatever sort of check the box um, mission I had in in life of my status and and everything, and, and it led me to a really um, fearful and dark place. And the moment that everything clicked for for me on the back end, I think, was when I when I chose faith in Christ and started to understand the the pr God's promises, everything is, is going to be restored and redeemed eventually all of, you know, it, all of the evil and all of the hurt will be, will be cleaned up. And that in the interim, 
right? Your job is to use your kind of free will to affirm God's will and to and to trust and to march forward. And and that tied back to what my father had always said. Again, maybe not in in those terms, in in Christian or faith specific terms, but my father's constant message to me of, hey, you've got you've got what it takes. No one can change your attitude. You, you know, control what you can control, how you respond, um, and and have this optimistic outlook. Again, not bubbly or or necessarily cheerful, but have this have this confident, optimistic outlook that you can keep moving forward and overcome this. And I think when when I saw that lesson from my father in the gospel, that's when it, things really clicked for me. Do you feel like? this lesson has not only that lesson, but also uh, all the new patience and growth and uh, defeating complacency that you've developed as a new father. Do you feel like that's helped you become a a better lawyer, a better professional? Oh yeah. I mean, I don't think I would be a a lawyer today if I, if I hadn't experienced um, my faith conversion and, and the, you know, I, I experienced at a very, fearful and dark place in my life. Um, what I later re- learned um, was the peace of God that surpasses all human understandings from book of Philippians. And at the time, I didn't know what it was, but I was at a, a an incredibly low point um, and prayed to God for the first time in years, years, and uh, and just prayed that thy will be done and experienced a, a radical conversion of just enough relief from panic and fear that I was able to kind of get my bearings and map out a path forward, um, and, and start my, my faith journey. Um, and, but for that, I I don't even think I would be practicing law today. I think I wouldn't be able to handle the high stakes and high pressure, um, nature of the job. Um, you know, it's long hours where I, I, I'm, I'm a litigator, so I, I handle multi-million dollar lawsuits on behalf of companies. And obviously there's a lot of stress and uncertainty and emotional tension in those situations. And I, I pray before every deposition, court appearance, every, everything, you know, and, and the, that peace of God, uh, it's my shield. I don't, I don't go in anywhere without it. So yeah, I did. I think it's not only improved my ability to be a lawyer, it's enabled me to be one in the first place. How about lessons from being a new father? Have you applied those to your profession? I, th- I think I'm more patient um, with, with other uh, people, with, even with situations you, you know, at, at work and not so demanding to try to push things through the way that I think that they should, they should work. Right. Um, you know, as a father or, or a mother for that matter, um, you're, you're in a leadership role, right? There's, there's someone who it reports to you, um, in your structure of a family. Right. And, um, you, you know, I, I'm 33. Uh, I've got a couple of dyna- of dynamics at work that are, sort of where people report to me, although, you know, at, at a law firm, it's it's not necessarily structured the same way as like a corporate um, structure. So it's a little more fluid, but nonetheless, I've, I've taken some leadership um, lessons from raising my son these first two years. And, and really they've been lessons for me of, of how I react and interact with other people and being a little more patient. Um, and I've, I've taken those there. And another thing is I, I think I have a better perspective on, on work and life with my son and, and in the picture. And I realize, like, Hey, not every day is a 12 hour or 14 hour work day. Right. And, uh, and yes, these, these cases that we're handling are, are really important. We're going to do excellent work for our clients, but there's a lot of other stuff going on in, in people's lives with their families. Um, you know, and we need to respect that. And I think that that's, that's perspective has helped me in my career. That's super awesome. I I think one of the big reservations that a lot of young men 
and young people have in general is this idea that it's going to cost, uh, I think for men in particular, that it's going to cost your career, that you're going to lose a lot, that you're going to you know, be sacrificing your identity, sacrificing things that are important to you. Uh, but it sounds like you would agree that, that having children is a, is an additive, is an additive bonus to your life. Oh, 100%. Um, I, I, from my experience so far, um, having kids, um, has made me a, a much more well-rounded person. Um, and I, I don't, think that it's inhibited, you know, my professional development or career or, or my identity, you know, as a, as a lawyer in any way. Um, now, look, I mean, there's 24 hours in a day and you're going to spend a certain number of those days with your kid. Right. But, but I, it, it, so the facts are facts, but I don't think that that's hampered or, or pulled me away from my career in any way. I, I think that if we sit down and audit our time, it, each of us can find some some kind of wasted time in that day. And and I think one of the things that having kids has made me the 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 biggest improvement in my skill set from having um, our son has been time prioritization and time management, right? And and not not giving so much of my time to worthless activities, whether the, you know whatever that is, and. I, I don't want to sound cliche, just, but you know, whatever social media or it, it, anything that you're doing that has a really low value um, return on your time investment, be, it gets highlighted when you have kids. And so if anything, it makes you a better manager of time and resources and attention, I think. I think that's a, a really great learning for our entrepreneurial fathers out there. Uh, what about... I mean, what do you think would be true about that for our more employee based or more W2s? Yeah, I mean, you look, everyone's got to find their own kind of logistical system that works. I mean, you got to you got to drop your kid off at a certain time and pick them up at a certain time. Um, but I, I, again, I, I think that in terms of your skill set as a as a person, as a contributor in the workplace, you're you're only going to grow and gain perspective and skills from being a father. It's 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 only going to make you a better person. That's what's happened to me. So I don't I don't think that there's any detriment where becoming a father is going to you know make you a less productive uh, contributor to your company. Um, in my experience you know every the thing is everyone else has has kids right and look not everyone not not every single person has has children and not everyone is necessarily a good father but if you look around at your company there's lots of people with kids it means it's a it's a human experience and in my experience people have been pretty compassionate and understanding about uh having kids and and the the time that that requires in sort of the big life milestones that you go through. I um, mean, it's certainly been the case at, at my firm. They've been fantastic about it. That's awesome. And being so, and, and having a, a good group of men around you, men and women around you to support you as uh, with this new identity is, uh, I think that's critical to feel good fathers. You have this quote that you said was meaningful to you. Uh, you belong. Uh, let's, let's have a brief discussion about that and where it comes from. Yeah, that's really the two word summary of of all the advice my my father gave me. That was his message that he gave me and my brother um, every time. Um, Any time that we were about to go into something big, you know, whether it's like the bar exam or or a sporting event or something in life, maybe it's a hard season of life. Maybe we have a setback. That was his two word. Um, affirmation you belong and it was really a summary of everything that that he had taught us of believing in your potential believing that you have whatever you need inside you to overcome the setbacks and affirming that no matter what you are in control of your response to the situation even when you can't control the situation you always control your response 
and and so this was just his his way of saying you belong i mean you wherever it is you're trying to get to or you're trying to do you belong there awesome uh thank you kyle thanks for for uh coming on the show if uh, folks want to get a hold of you or connect with you where can they go yeah, so I'm going to be launching my website, kylezunker.com, uh, very soon. Um, if you go on there, you can check out uh, my blog that I'm going to be launching around uh, the turn of the year, January 2024. Um, my, I also have information on there about my book coming out in May of 2024. And then on social, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook under the handle Kyle A. Zunker. Thanks so much, Kyle, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. And it's been great being on the Feel Good Fatherhood podcast today. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to hear more of Jay's great content, please click subscribe below. And if you really dig Kyle and conversations like this, YouTube has said this video right here, this is the next video. This is the one you should be watching. I know it's one of mine. So go ahead and click that. Uh, you won't be disappointed.